So everyone and welcome. The first episode of the Mario Record anime has aired, so let's do a bit of a review with the first episode. This will be split into two parts. First off, I'm going to do a no spoilers, just talking about the episode and then talk about what I liked and didn't like about the episode. Um, and then I'm going to have a second video where I'm going to compare the game story to what happened in the anime. And I'm going to talk about some other stuff that you might not have picked up on if you don't know the game. But first off, the spoiler free stuff in this video. We begin with a train ride where we see Iroha fight a witch together with Kue and while they're fighting we hear voices from the off that talk about Maho Shoujo. This basically is just a crash chorus in what Maho Shoujo are like in this universe. Just in case you haven't watched the original Madoka Magica anime, so you just get a little bit of a crash course on that so you're not completely uh, useless when it comes to all of this information. We then see Iroha walk home, she lives in a very small and very simple house, completely different from what uh, Madoka lived in, and we see her have visions of this weird character and that something is going wrong uh, around her in her house. We, later at the end of the episode, will then come to understand that this is Ui, and we see that, for example, that her room is half of what it should be, and she accidentally makes two bentos without thinking about it when she makes food. She, we then see her parents, for one, have no face, and secondly, they're gonna go on some travel somewhere else. Doesn't really matter what exactly they're doing, because this is not about adults, this is about magical girls, so kick the parents out, because what do we need parents for? We then see Iwa go to school, where she gets to talk with Kyubei about her wish, because she has no idea what her wish was, and there's a lot of mystery going on, and ultimately she gets called to the teacher's office, I thought she was gonna get scolded for being mad, but no, the teacher just goes, you're gonna be alone because your parents are gone. Sucks to be you. And then she talks to some friends who basically all go, hey, you're a good person, you know how it's nice that you're as great of a person as you are. After which she does their cleaning duty and jumps around like a wild animal just to show off that she's a superhuman. And she gets a call from uh, Kroe that they should talk together on a train where Kroe reveals that she wants to go to Kamihama. Because in Kamihama, apparently magical girls can be saved from being magical girls. I talk a bit about that and at this point you will understand that you're gonna hear the words Uwasa and Yume very much a lot in this anime. They ultimately get attacked by Boxwood, the witch that they try to fight at the beginning of the entire anime, and they get separated. Iroha fights some minions, she gets in, into the labyrinth of the of the witch, and also seems the labyrinth is kind of like a, an aquarium. I think the witch kind of wants to swim around, so it just creates an aquarium, and that's the labyrinth, but the labyrinth just takes off and heats itself over to Kamihama and takes Iroha along with it. At which point it crashes into a train station. Kuo is also there. She's injured. She's having a bad day. And they land very close to the, uh, be the labyrinth of another witch. It's the sand witch. The sandbox witch. The sand witch. Called Zenobia and her minions Zabai. And what happens is Zenobia sees the other witch, Boxwood, and she just completely destroys the witch immediately. Now, that's pretty good, right? The uh, the other witch got destroyed, Zenobia doesn't realize, or she doesn't seem to notice that uh, Iroha and the wounded Kroe are nearby. So the two of them can just run away. No, Iroha just completely goes bloop and attacks the witch, after which the witch uh, realizes that Iroha and Kroe are there and tries to kill them. But not before a little Kyubei appears. Uh, Fans have called this uh, Mokyu. So Mokyu appears and sings a song about Uwasa. I told you we're going to hear that a lot. And the witch is distracted and fails to kill the Mokyu. And then right afterwards, the big hero appears. Yachu appears and shows off. She, Yachu basically has seen Madoka Magica and she's like, remember that scene where Mami showed off and she summoned like a hundred guns and completely blasted her opponents to death? She goes, that's child's play. Have spears. She summons like a hundred spears and throws them all at the witch, completely destroying it. And Mami fanboys at this point are having a really hard day because they're like, man, Mummy isn't the only super powerful veteran anymore who summons hundreds of weapons to throw at opponents. 
And I think Yachi was even stronger than Mami, so Mami fanboy is going to have a hard time. But that's fine, because Yachio has defeated the witch and she talks to them all menacingly, mysteriously, because she's the strong and the other two are the weak, so she's talking down on them. And she basically tells them, like, hey, the rumors about magical girls being saved in Kamehameha, that's all wrong, but it's really dangerous around here when we have multiple magical girls, they all have their own territory, so you should probably just get out uh, and not come back. That's basically what she tells them, and yeah, they can't really talk back at them and they go, okay, we're leaving. So they leave, but not before Iroha, on the way back, has another vision of multiple magical girls going on their trip to Kamihama and she sees that silhouette again that she saw earlier and it's revealed that that is Ui and that Iroha's wish was to heal Ui's disease. At that point, the entire uh, episode ends with the opening, which is quite nice, but I'm not going to talk about that yet because I have a special video planned just for the OP. So, I'm talking about all of this as a review. So, this is one thing that I wanted to mention is, I already mentioned this in while I was going through the episode and it was a bit weird and it looked really dumb on how Zenobia, after she killed Boxwood, seemed to not be that interested in Iroha, so, but Iroha just goes blah, blah, attack it while I have my injured friend next to me and makes Zenobia want to attack her, but meh, maybe she thought that, well, she's gonna attack me anyway, so I might as well get a, a surprise attack in. Maybe that was the idea, yeah, surprise attack it before it's gonna attack us. But it completely failed. I don't know. She, she only fired like one shot first as well, so I don't know. But that's only a small thing though. Next up, something that I'm more worried about is whenever we see Iroha fight, everything seems rather static and there's not a whole lot of movement going on. Like we know that Yachio, for example, she jumps around her own weapons and then she dive bombs into the witch. Like she actually uses some movement. But when we see Iroha she, in her first fight, she stands there and fires. She fights the familiars, where she just stands there and fires. Then she's in the labyrinth of uh, Boxwood, where she's floating around. And this time she's not standing around and firing, she's just floating there and firing. Then she tries to attack Zenobia, she just kneels there and fires. We're basically just going for all the different poses that Iroha can do without moving and just firing. So I hope that in the future she actually does more movement. I mean, earlier in the episode we saw her jump around the classroom for no reason. Why can't you do that in a fight? It would make her a harder target for enemies to hit. And it might help her to hit enemies as well if she could get closer to enemies before firing and then maybe backing off after firing. Actually using some positioning, some strategy, some actual movement. No, she just stands there and fires. But maybe you're gonna say, oh, that's because she's still a fairly newbie magical girl, so maybe it's gonna get better when she gets more experienced. Who knows? I hope that they're gonna at least improve on that, and that not we're not gonna see the entire anime of 12 episodes, 24 episodes maybe even, of Iroha just standing there and firing. I also found it weird that you have this whole mystery of Iroha's wish being built up to a, a uh, all throughout the episode and this mystery of who that silhouette is and why are there f mysterious things going on in the Tamaki household. But then at the end they go just like, yeah, they just reveal it. They just show, okay, it's Ui, uh, her wish was to heal Ui and that's basically the mystery solved at that point. I guess there's still the mystery of what happened to Ui, where is she, why did people forget about her in the first place? I guess we can go with that for the next few episodes and however long that takes. But I still found it weird that they, in the very first episode, they immediately tell you the answer to the mystery that it seemed like they were going to build up for multiple episodes and maybe even the entire anime, but whatever. They also brought up that mystery is in like the promotional material. Okay. Now about the music is... This is one piece of music that plays, it's heavy on the strings, right at the end when you have this vision of all these magical girls going to Kamehameha. I absolutely love that track and I want to hear it in its entirety alone. It's going to take a while for the OST to come out, but apart from that, I know there was at least like one or two parts, uh, one or two uh, pieces of OST that were reused from Madoka Magica uh, and I instantly recognized them, but apart from that, I don't think there was anything that I really... Um, recognized now after having seen the episode like two or three times like it did nothing really stuck in my head or anything I didn't really notice much of it 
But yeah, this OST isn't made by Yuki Kajura, as far as I know, so I think overall it's gonna be weaker than Maraka Maika's OST, but yeah, maybe they can reuse more stuff from Maraka Maika and it's gonna be great anyway. <laughs> Next up, the overall, the visuals are absolutely fantastic. I love the way most of the stuff looks, the way it feels, the way it drums up the tone, the atmosphere uh, of the anime. Like, for example, in the scene where she talks to Kyubei and you have uh, witch minions in the background doing some stuff. I like all of that. I just hope that A, the quality doesn't slip and it becomes worse. And at some point you really are just going to have the just a bunch of characters just standing around in an empty room without much going on for like 10 minutes. I don't know. And I also hope that fights get more dynamic. I want to see more of that stuff that Yachio did um, where it was more dynamic. There was more stuff going on in general and not just people standing there and attacking. I also like overall that there were very many, uh, quite a lot of visual details and references that you could pick apart if you really wanted to, because I like doing that stuff in the original Monica Micah as well. However, I'm not going to talk about that stuff just yet, because that's for the spoiler review. So overall, I did quite like it. I'm rather optimistic that it's going to be a decently good anime. It's not going to be something that blows people away, like Monica Micah did, but I think so far we had a pretty good start. This seems pretty promising. There's not too many things that I take issue with. So yeah, it's on its road to becoming a decent anime. That's pretty good. But yeah, the second half of this review will be the spoiler-filled video where I compare this to the game. And I'm going to talk about a lot about the spoilers, including spoilers that NA people might not even know. I don't know. We'll see about that. But yeah. That was it for this video, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll link the other video in the description. Uh, it, if you watch this immediately when this video comes out, I'm gonna take a few hours, maybe even longer, to get the second video out, so wait for it. If you want to be there immediately when this comes out, or when any new future, future video comes out, hit that subscribe button. And that was it, hope you guys enjoyed it. See you for the second part. Mm.